Scary Mysteries Twisted Twos, Area 51, and Mary Celeste. Tales of hauntings, murder, and scary mysteries. Every week, Twisted Twos dives into a pair of uniquely terrifying true stories that are worthy of a more in-depth look. For this week, we focus on a very secretive government facility and the mysterious disappearance of a crew on the open ocean. Get ready for Scary Mysteries Twisted Twos. Number 1. Area 51 In the middle of the Nevada desert lies a dusty road marked by only a chain-link fence and warning signs, and it leads directly to the front gate of Area 51. Shrouded in lore and mystery, Area 51 has been the subject of speculation for many decades. It's unclear what exactly the facilities are used for, but it's a site owned and run by the U.S. government, and some say it's there to conduct secret underground experiments. Of course, there are also the alien conspiracies that tie to the Roswell UFO crash, and others speculate to the possibility that one of its hangars was used to film and fake the moon landings. Whatever it is that's going on there, there's no denying that the government doesn't want anyone to know about it. So how did Area 51 become synonymous with secrecy and alien cover-ups? Initially, it was used to develop stealth reconnaissance aircrafts in the 1950s, particularly the U-2. But in order for this to be built, the government needed a secure, desolate area to be a base. Hence, the area in Nevada was chosen. When testing started for the U-2 aircraft in 1955, reports of unidentified flying objects began surfacing. Commercial plane pilots often reported sighting the craft flying at higher altitudes than what was expected at that time. This gave myth to the idea that it was either a foreign or alien ship. The Air Force knew these sightings were test flights for the U-2 but couldn't admit it in public, hence the go-to code became natural phenomena or weather research. After the U-2 testing was done, this led way for many more crafts to be tested on the site. However, what they have been developing exactly has been kept secret for the past 70 years. Most of this information, or even the fact that Area 51 existed in the first place, wasn't confirmed until 2013 when unredacted versions of certain FBI files were finally released to the public. The alien conspiracy claims began in 1989 when Bob Lazar said he helped reverse engineer alien technology and also saw aliens on the inside. Other proposed happenings going on inside include meetings and joint programs with aliens, creating and developing weather control, forming time travel, and even studying teleportation. It's also thought to be a secret base for one world governments and the meeting place for the secret organization called the Majestic 12. The entire area has a 23 by 25 mile no-fly zone for civilian aircrafts. There are also rumors about secret facilities located under nearby Groom Lake. The area surrounding it is completely off limits to any civilians, and some people say the land contains an underground railroad system and even a secret airstrip. Another engineer in 1996 claimed that he was employed at Area 51 during the 50s and that he worked with an alien nicknamed J-Rod, where they developed a flying disc simulator. Another man named Dan Burrish also claimed to have worked there, cloning alien viruses together with the same alien, J-Rod. In pop culture, there's no denying that the mystery of Area 51 has only deepened. While there may or may not be anything of extraterrestrial origins at the base, it's clear that if indeed the government were hiding something like that from the public, then Area 51 would most likely be the place. Number 2. Mary Celeste On December 5, 1872, a British ship named the De Gracia spotted an unusual vessel adrift near the Azores. Captain David Morehouse was surprised that he actually recognized the ship, and it was the Mary Celeste, which had left eight days before him and his crew had set out. The Celeste was bound for Genoa, Italy, 
and should have arrived already, so the captain steered course to offer help, knowing something must have gone wrong. He sent a boarding party and discovered that nothing was wrong structurally to the ship. Most of the crew's belongings were still in their quarters, but the cargo hold had filled up with about four feet of water. All their rations, however, were left behind, including six months' worth of water and food and barrels of alcohol as well. But there were two very unsettling things. First, the only lifeboat on the ship was missing, and second, not a single member of the crew could be found. Thus, the legacy of the Mary Celeste had begun. Everything about it was a mystery and soon word spread about what had happened. Rumors and theories soon began to pop up, including a mutiny, cargo fumes, and even the possibility of an alien abduction. Captain Benjamin Briggs headed the Mary Celeste. His wife Sarah and their daughter Sophia were on board as well, along with first mate Albert Richardson and several other crew members. For two whole weeks, the ship battled bad weather. This was recorded on the last of the ship's entries dated November 25th at 5 a.m. Despite the rough ride, the Mary Celeste was still considered seaworthy and didn't suffer any major damage that would have prevented it from sailing further. The De Gratia did note that it seemed the crew had left in a hurry, because among all of their belongings, they also noticed that their smoking pipes were left behind, something they could have easily grabbed. Captain Morehouse explained that the crew could have left in a panic with no time to consider what to bring with them, except just the clothes on their back. When the vessel was towed back to shore, a hearing was opened to see if the salvagers, which was the crew of the De Gratia, were entitled to some portion of the insurance money. Persistent rumors about insurance fraud haunted the hearing, including the possible friendship between the two ship captains, and that they had agreed to fake the crime and then split the proceeds. In the end, this was never proven, and the salvage crew did receive partial compensation. Another theory that was propelled by Captain Briggs's cousin, Oliver Cobb, said the ship may have suffered an explosion of sorts from the fumes and the alcohol they were carrying. He proposed that the noxious fumes might have caused gases to form, which meant that the captain may have panicked and taken the lifeboat while attaching a rope to have a means of going back to the ship if necessary. In bad weather, though, that rope might have broken off or was improperly attached in the first place, severing the lifeboat from the Mary Celeste for good. While many scoffed at his theory, citing lack of explosion marks and damage, in 2006 the theory was revived thanks to an experiment done by a television station. They recreated similar circumstances in the hold, and it resulted in an explosion. While there was a ball of fire, there was no damage because it was a pressure wave type of explosion that involved cold air instead of hot fumes. Thus, there was no considerable damage done. However, it would have been terrifying for the crew to see. The Mary Celeste itself continued on for several years before finally running aground on a reef and then left for salvagers. Even today, the mystery of the ship endures. No one knows where the crew went or why they would leave a functioning ship to risk their lives in a small lifeboat in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So there were two of the most secretive and strange stories around. The world can be a crazy place, and Twisted Twos is sure to show you why. If you like this video, then please subscribe to our channel, and each week we'll have a new scary mystery show for you to check out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.